and welcome back to another complete Liverpool playthrough episode. It's me, Dr. Benji FM. Now, let's get cracking then. We've got Sunderland and Copenhagen today. Uh, there has been a, a, an international break. Now, I know this is called the complete Liverpool playthrough, but I'm not going to lie. Nothing. Jordan Henderson got a bruised shin out for three days. That was all that really happened in the entire international break. So, uh, we, I figured we'd move on to it. Sunderland and Copenhagen. And I've got a couple of questions from you. I did ask uh, in a pretty every recent episode to leave some questions. So I've got two to answer today, as well as two games then. Sunderland are the first one. Two must win games in the Premier League we currently sit in fifth position uh, we are 11 points behind league leaders Manchester United and last episode you might remember it was a late Brighton goal that caused us to draw the game not ideal yeah, by any stretch but hopefully today we can bounce back with a couple of wins and we need them uh, but of course focusing first on the league the team for the first game then Joe Hart will be in goal Nathaniel Klein Van Dijk Matip and Dutro Williams will be at the back we've got Nangola and Henderson in the centre with Mane De Bruyne and Keita uh, behind Sergio Aguero who I'm hoping so far, six goals in eight games, two substitute appearances, looking pretty good, uh, and hopefully that form continues. The only issue I've really got is Kevin De Bruyne's form has been very intermittent, but we're going to keep giving him the games. We've spent a lot of money on him. We have to try and hope at some point he'll find some form. Um, I may I may switch Sadio Mane to be more supportive than attacking, which can see if that makes any difference whatsoever um, in terms of not being so open, maybe leaving Klein a little bit exposed. So we're going to change that a little bit. Right, let's get into it. Uh, and as we go into this first game, I've got a question as well. So I'm going to read out the question as this game loads. Um, it's from that one guy. He put, question, exclamation point. So he's clearly serious about his question. I've been trying to record FM videos to start my own channel. However, I sound really, really boring. Uh, is there any way I can sort that out? Or will charisma come with time? Well, there's two answers to that question, really. Uh, interestingly, Sunderland still got Defoe. So they've got, I mean... They've not really got wingers. They've got Lenz, who's, yeah, but Barini on that. Brave, anyway. Uh, so, to answer your question, that one guy, I assume you're on your own, so, as in so, you're a solo entity, like most YouTubers, to be fair. Um, and, and it's really revolving around you being boring, which you, you might be being overcritical. Like, first of all, I don't actually know, so you, maybe you're being overcritical, but um, someone didn't even comment and said, oh, Benji was very boring in his first videos. It comes over time. No, I, was I? Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't use a webcam back then, too fair. So that might, that might have had an impact. Um, I do think with time, you do develop the confidence and, as you put it, sort of charisma to, uh, to be able to do this. There is, of course, like, and, and this is sort of the brutal, honest truth of it, like, not everyone is a natural at presenting, whether it be on TV or, or in a video or on the radio or whatever. So that that might at some stage hold you back to fight with a good effort there that might hold you back if you're not like a natural at it then of course there's there is that what would I, I don't want to okay, i don't want to sound too big headed but there is sort of it, it some for some people it comes far more naturally than with others as we have some really good chances there but don't quite convert um and i'd like to think that it's something that one i developed over time for example like at school you'd have to do these sort of speaking and listening tasks wouldn't you remember this where you have to stand up and talk about I don't know, maybe either, either it was an answer or do a presentation. I used to hate it. You might not think it now watching like the videos, but I used to hate doing that. I, like To the point where I wouldn't want to go into school that day, I'd think, I really don't want to do this. You'd end up doing it, and it not being so bad. Aguero there with a nice finish. Mane with a ball in, and Aguero just taps it in. That's what I want to see from those two. And interestingly, Mane on support gets an assist. So something to take a note of. You'll obviously see it again in the replay. Gets beyond his defender really well. But um, those speaking and listening tasks, I used to hate them. but like, really despise them. And then... In between sort of years, so I, when I, how old have I been? So at 16, in between like year 11 and starting college, I started to take YouTube a little bit more seriously. And I was doing videos on a more regular basis and it became quite a, it, it, came, it became a thing for me. I, and this was when I sort of had a, more of a vlogging channel. And over the time, I went to different sort of meetups and gatherings when they weren't so much sort of an organised event. They were more just 30 YouTubers would go to a park in London and hang out for the day. Um... It, it does. It's the sounds. Would you play that? It sounds a little bit weird, but it, at the time it felt fun and normal, because um, everyone was around the, the same age, so it's quite good. Um, and and you just, and going to those events and doing YouTube generally, and it's like talking on the Sims back in the day. You're just talking to a mirror. That was like the way you would improve your charisma, and it is a little bit like that. Getting feedback on the way you talk. Like if you watch my first ever videos, my first first ever videos. I'm talking like nearly ten years ago now. They were dreadful, um, but the way things have got for me now that was a lovely goal by the way if you're watching it in the background i'm going the way the way i am now i feel like i'm a lot more confident i can speak i've done i've done like live radio with uh bbc radio manchester a few years ago i've done a few different bits and bobs for different like podcasts and whatnot and i like i think it is something that you develop over time is what i'm getting at so don't be put off if when you first start you feel like 
you're not a natural at it. Because for me, and I know this might this might demotivate you a little bit, but it took me like a good, I'd say five six years to get to the point where I felt comfortable speaking. I could I could now like I feel. It's, it's interesting. Like, I did all the YouTube stuff, and then I went back, and we had to do this a similar sort of presentation sort of stuff at college. And it, during those presentation things, I could see people around me looking very nervous, and for whatever reason, I didn't feel nervous at that point. And it was as if doing YouTube and putting myself out there and talking to essentially strangers and becoming friends with strangers gave me this this added confidence that I didn't have before. Now, of course, if you're someone that's that's maybe quite anxious, maybe someone that's quite shy in general then it's never going to work out. But if you've got an ambition to do this full-time or to maybe move, to maybe use this as a stepping stone to move into something else, then I think with the hard, the work, you'll get as much as you put in. So the more you record, the more you try to get better at it, the more you try and sort of craft it into something that you can be passionate about. Ignore the facts on the Discord and just listen to this this advice. Um, then the better you'll be in. So you'll look back, for example, like you could do it now, you'll look back in three years and go, do you know what, actually, I've improved a lot. And I, I still think that now. I, I, I sort of joked at the, at the beginning that someone said, my first videos were awful. But to a degree, when you compare them to now, they were awful. Like, there's there's certainly a difference uh, as we come to now. So don't be too put off, is what I'm saying. Like, I, I don't want people to think that you have to be perfect straight away. Of course, generally speaking, the people you watch are the people that are the most polished and the most well-rehearsed and the most generally confident because they've been doing it for longer and when you then start and you compare yourself to those people sometimes it's not as good and I remember feeling a bit like that sometimes and think why isn't my stuff as good as this person's well the reality was they've been doing it for a lot longer than me and in some cases they were just naturally better at it than me um so it took me time to work up to this point now where I feel quite comfortable um so yeah hopefully that helped so I don't, I don't know if it did but that one guy, if you're listening or watching, do leave a comment. I'll tell you if it helped or not. Uh, we've got another question. We will answer that, though, uh, in our second game. And we'll focus on this one a little bit. Halftime has been and gone. 2-1 against Sunderland. If you like the fact I include the questions in these. Oh, my word, they've messed it up. And Pickford makes a great save. If you do like the fact we include questions, then, again, leave more. And I want to try and include questions more so. Especially in sort of the first halves where not much is going on. Say that, those three goals. So <laughs> we'll see if we can cling on to this win against Sunderland. As I said before, it's a must-win game. We have to beat them. We have to equally beat uh, our Champions League contenders as well. So, uh, team-wise, we've gone pretty full strength for this one, and I'm going to probably rotate in that Champions League game. I think we can probably afford to. Kevin De Bruyne, though, once again, has had a shocking game. He really has. I don't know if... Uh, I don't really know what to do with him. Maybe if he played a little bit deeper, maybe a little bit more creatively, then that would help. But, yeah, it's not being good. Anyway, uh, it looks as if we're going to see this out. Five seconds to go. The game is, well, the time has ticked away as uh, it's played up to Mane, headed on. And there we are then, 2-1. All the highlights came when I was answering flipping questions, but <laughs> there we go. Uh, not much else happened in the second half, and we'll take that. A nice victory, boys. Well done. And it then sees us march on then to our game against FC Copenhagen. Is it Copenhagen? I think it is. And the next episode, as mentioned, two games in one episode against Manchester United. So, uh, so get your questions in, and I'll answer a couple during that. Right, let's uh, let's continue forward. Then Sergio Agro. It was a great goal as well. Obviously, you saw it twice. Um, the ball was knocked in from Mane, and it was just that bit of movement to get in front of his defender and pop it home. That, uh, that got us the goal. Right, uh, with the fact we've got games coming up in mind, we are going to rest all of these players for two days in the chance that most of them will be able to feature in our Champions League game. So hopefully that'll be the case. Yeah, and so I do have another question. So uh, we'll, we'll do that as we kick off the first game. Uh, and after we've selected the squad mainly, again, this is sort of nothing stuff okay Stanley, a few things could do with improving. So we'll, we will improve them. <laughs> I mean, it makes sense, right? Why not? What's stopping me? Oh, excuse me. So I had a cup of tea before we started, and I feel a little bit all over the place. I say all over the place. That's that's probably the wrong phrase to use. Uh, right, let's take a look at our group then. Group H, Champions League Group H, and we are currently top of the group. We know then that a win, or even a draw actually, will see us through the group and, uh, and progressing into the last 16. Real Madrid play Napoli, which is good for us because it means that if those two teams hopefully take some points off each other, a draw would be absolutely perfect uh, and Napoli wouldn't be equally as good because I really, really want to finish top of the group and then, in theory, get an easier tie. Obviously, we've seen in recent years that that's not always the case. Uh, right, and team selection, you can see, due to the rest we gave them, pretty much everyone is fully match fit. Van Dijk, who was probably the tiredest of all the players, um has recovered pretty well too, so we'll keep him out there. I think the only change we might make, 
And it's purely because he's not been playing very well. It's bringing Adam Lallana in for Kevin De Bruyne and just giving Lallana the chance to shine. Equally, we've not had anyone playing that sort of attacking midfield cam spot very well. It's almost like we shouldn't have sold Coutinho, maybe. Um, yeah, we'll try Lallana, though. We'll put De Bruyne on the bench for... for Carrius. We won't... Actually, no, we'll... we'll no, we'll, we'll, we'll keep it as is. We're going to play the same 11. I want this 11 to start clicking. This is the best team I've got, this best 11. So we're going to see what we can do with them. Right, uh, let's move on to the next question as well then, because we want to answer a few of these. Uh, Abdul Jar asked questions. He actually asked two questions, the cheeky swine, but we'll answer both of them uh, as we just take a look through. Cornelius up front for Copenhagen. Right, uh, passionately you say... We can secure qualification. Let's put the pressure on the boys. We're away from home. Be a good away win in Europe. I, mean, I need two wins today, so let's hope we can get it. Right, first question is, how do you think Liverpool will do in the Champions League? Of course, Liverpool qualified uh, in fourth. Do have to go through a playoff uh, to get in, but it should be against a relatively easy side if, if it all works out. Um, generally, I th like genuinely even, I think we'll get out of the group. I don't, I don't really mind who's in the group. I would back us under the Jurgen Klopp's leadership to get us out of the group as the ball whipped in it's a force to cater Aguero's there now deflects in and uh, finds the back of the net but I do, I do expect Liverpool to get out of the group um, I have to say beyond the group I think it's a bit of a lottery because of the way the system works that you can face you obviously face the first or second time, so, uh, team from the group there's a lot of groups now I find in the Champions League that have got some really strong like pairs in now we've seen groups in the past where like Real Madrid and Dortmund are together things like this uh, Manchester City and say Bayern Munich are together like, so there's obviously th that level of competition you're always going to play someone good in the first round of the knockout stages these days yeah very rarely like, there's, there's always sort of three or four teams that aren't as good but you're going to get a side that isn't necessarily sort of top tier and I'm talking like sort of the top 10 teams in the competition. So that's going to be interesting. And beyond that, it's very hard to predict. That's why when you talk about winning the, the competition, you really have to go with the Bayern Munich, Real Madrid, Barcelona's, because they've been there and done it. So you can kind of say, well, you know what, they've proven they can do this. They can probably do it again. Um, so I think Liverpool are in a similar situation to say, to probably Dortmund, ironically, of course, for, former Klopp team, that they'll be a good side next year in the Champions League, but and they'll get through the group. But then beyond that, there could be that, that problem because you don't know who you're going to get as a Keita drills one wide so that's that question uh, and then on the reverse of that, put, do you think Wenger will take the Europa League seriously and I think interestingly the, the model that Manchester United set and were in the end I guess were proven right to set was that qualifying for the Champions League through the league now is has never been this difficult there's four spots available and even so it's very difficult to qualify um, so Wenger might look at that competition realise to himself actually with this, with a team we've got, we should be winning the Europa League. We like there's an argument to say Arsenal will have the best team in the Europa League by a little bit of a distance. You could say the same for Manchester United last year. They probably had the best side in the Europa League, so were favourites favourites to win it. And I think I don't I've not seen the odds, but I would guess that Arsenal are heavy favourites. Of course, again you then can't account for the teams that finished third in the Champions League groups as well. My the shot comes in hits the post. My word, you can't account for the teams that come down. Uh, from the Champions League to face Arsenal. It'd be fantastic if it's Bayern Munich, just for the comedy of it. Um, so to answer your question, I do think Wenger will take it seriously. I, I, partly, Part of me thinks, why not? Like, I, if you're the favourite for the competition, when was the last time Arsenal were in a European competition and were amongst the favourites? Ten years ago, when they got to the final, maybe? that that was, And even then, they probably weren't tipped to actually get there, but they had sort of the back end of the Invincibles when they did that. So... Yes, I think they will take it seriously. I don't actually think Arsenal have got much choice but to take it seriously. It might be their best route in. Speaking of the best routes in, Aguero hammers one into the back of the net. That, my friends, was a lovely finish. He's bang in form. Ninth goal of the season. Looks as if Madrid are beating Napoli, uh, which makes our next game or our last game in the group against Real Madrid for that top spot. Aguero, though, lovely finish. Tell you what, that is beautiful. You don't see that from any strikers on the game. It's the power and direction that you don't see very often. Uh, but that was, that was stunning. Um... So, yeah, I hope they take it seriously in the same way that Manchester United did. The, I guess the question mark will also be on Arsenal is if they challenge for the league. At that point, do they have to say, well, actually, we're not that bothered about Europe. Say at Christmas, they're in the top three and they're battling for the title. All of a sudden, does Wenger take that Europa League spot seriously when it comes to the February and March where the key games for qualifying for the top four um become at the sort of the forefront of his attention that's going to be curious because we've seen recently and no sort of spurs but spurs don't take it seriously because they're very much focused on get like securing their league position and it'll depend on what Arsene Wenger wants to do of course he's probably got two years left in his contract so it won't be his final year 
but it will be curious to see what he does. The time has ticked away here. Ho again, hopefully you've enjoyed me answering the questions. I've not done this before, so hopefully you like it. Um, I know this is a complete playthrough, but these were two games. The reason I decided to answer questions was the two games that mean, I don't want to say very little, but they were hopefully going to be routine wins, and luckily for me, they've turned out to be. Otherwise, this would have been a very different episode. Uh, but there we are then, 2-0 win, and it gives us... Well, two. I, I don't remember the last time we had two wins in one episode. It feels like it was an age ago. Uh, but there we are. Us and Real Madrid, by the way, identical records. Both scored 14, conceded 6, 8 goal difference with 12 points. And uh, we both qualify for the last 16 of the Champions League. Next episode is very much a Manchester United special, which will be interesting. Uh, so look forward to that one. We're through in the Champions League. We're looking good in the league. And we've got an EFL Cup quarter final coming up next time. So we love with care for me to mention. Until next time, I'll see you again very, very soon for some more. Goodbye.